from PRX. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary, it's time for the podcaster, who, while he's not seen, he's barely heard, ideally, uh, 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 or, you know, generally kind of heard. I think that'd be more co- co- correct. Correct. Yeah, not, not seen and barely heard. Uh, that was what, what I would have said if I had, was more concise, uh, but I'm not. Uh, but I'm here so you can barely hear me or just ra- or rarely hear me. Uh, I was trying to think of one more thing that rhymed with that. Uh, uh, like, like, uh, but I can't because you know what time it is. It's time for sleep with me. Podcast to put you to sleep. And if you could pay attention for a few minutes, if you're a regular listener, uh, really, these are the ways we keep the show going. And if you forget, just when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, sleep with me podcast at dot com slash sponsors. Hey, Scoots here, just tucking you in. And uh, wanted to check in. You know, this is a part of the show where I say, hey, if you're in a position to support the show, Think about, uh, you know, now you don't have to worry about this if you're not, because I'm doing my best. I'm going to keep sleeping, me coming out twice a week for free. But think about what did you used to do before sleep with me? Or what if there wasn't sleep with me? But you say, oh, okay, well, I'll just listen to this other thing. Or, oh, I'd just go back to using this. Or does sleep with me really work for you? And say, well, I'd really miss it. If, if there wasn't sleep with me, I'd really miss it. If your answer is like, what would you do if there wasn't sleep with me? If it's not a quick answer, uh, think about supporting the show. If, you, if it gives you pause, uh, because while I'm doing my best to keep, keep the show free for everybody, I do that with the help of the listeners that take action. So if you're in a position to take action, and only if you're in a position to do so, like I say in these other messages, like 3% of listeners take action the show gets by. 5% of listeners take action. The show flourishes. So uh, think about that. What would I do without Sleep With Me? Well, I want that podcast to flourish. Uh, Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Thanks and good night. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp, everybody. And, you know, I'm always wishing life came with a user manual, whether it's as simple as deciding what's for dinner or having a serious talk with someone in my personal life or when I can't sleep and I've got the thoughts and the feelings. Uh, I say, oh, man, what should I do about this? Because, unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. When it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. And that's why BetterHelp Online Therapy is the next best thing. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. You know, therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and exciting accessible anywhere, 100% online. And like I said, I go to therapy every single week. I get coping skills and I can learn how to be my best when things are not going well, to be there for the other people in my life and to help them when they're not at their best. That's why in my personal life, I'm always happy to recommend talk therapy and better help uh, to people. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus it's a Affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sleep with me. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It is time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. One part of the podcast, that's that's true. I need you to hear this part of the podcast. That's why I pick up my energy. I pick up my voice. Because without listeners like Tova, it wouldn't be possible for this show to come out twice a week for free. Without listeners who support the sponsors, let them know about it. Like Tova, who supported Brooklyn and got a Lux Hardcore bundle. Oh, boy, that Brooklyn embedding. So if you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it so I could thank you here 
here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. I'll send you a thank you video because I can't make the show without you. I appreciate those of you that do it, and so does everybody else. So thank you, Tova. The next part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. There's links to resources you could connect with right now, including international resources right in our show notes. So please use those resources. It's also about being a member of uh, the communities around us, being a part of positive change, taking action, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, but learning more, taking action as part of positive change. There's links to resources where you can do more in the show notes. And I'd love for you to join us in one of the things we're doing, which is building hygiene kits for people experiencing homelessness, buying hygiene kits, and just having fun together as a community around Sleep With Me. You could do that for free. You could sign up for the newsletter. That's where I keep everybody up to date. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. And that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? This posty poster song sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at Jonathan Man Darkness. I'll write a song for you. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators You can support your scooter on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget to get your sleep phones, everybody. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. Most comfortable way to listen to sleep with me. Use sleep with me at checkout. You'll get $5 off your order. Thanks, everybody. Oh, what do you say we get on with the show? Hey, everybody. This is Scoots. This is an all intro episode. We run these on major holidays. So I hope wherever you are, you're getting the rest you need. You know, this is a season of time changes and seasonal stuff. But I hope you enjoy these all intros. If you really love all intros, 10 and $20 patrons get uh, two all extra all intro episodes every single month. As well as access to all the previous ones we've ran on Patreon and to the public, which is a lot. I don't even, I'm, honestly, I don't even have to no, know. Let's see. Well, two a month. Uh, so it'll be 24 a year minimum, but there's 54, we, we, uh, I don't know, probably at least like 40, 50, uh, 60, so I don't know. Great question, Scoots. But anyway, I'm really thankful uh, for your support and your listening or just being able to help someone uh, that, that's going through something I can kind of relate to. How feel? <laughs> Just weird when I'm recording this. I've had, had quite a few nights of not good sleep, so I'm glad I can be there for you in the deep dark night. Uh, and I uh, appreciate you tuning in the show, or if you're tuning in for the first time, I appreciate it too. You're you're in, you're in for an interesting journey because it's going to be intro after intro after intro. All right, thanks uh, so much for listening. Good night, everybody. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's the thoughts, the feelings... Uh, physical sensations, it changes in time or temperature. Uh, you know, whatever scheme, like work schedule, travel schedule, whatever it is, I'm here to keep your company and take your mind off. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, uh, like word, word scram, whatever those are, where I take a word and I try to pronounce it. It's, it's almost like too many words are trying, or too many letters are trying to get out of my mouth at the same time. So then they kind of get, uh, 
what is it called, backed up, and then they all kind of spill out. So sometimes they call it word scrambles or word spillage. Uh, but it's more, I guess that's spillage. Uh, what happens after it gets blocked up? Uh, kind of like in a comedy from like a, a silent movie. When all the, like, I think that was called the Keystone Cops. I don't know if I ever saw one. But I can imagine all of them trying to go through one door at the same time. And then they kind of get stuck in the doorway and in the hallway to the door. And eventually they all spill out the other side. It's like a, a part, but just one part of my brain looks like that uh, most of the time. So I don't know if anybody can relate to that. Uh, having things running around and then trying to go through doors. Uh, you know, climbing in the car, you know, you say, how do, how'd they get all those in? How'd those cars, how'd they get into one car like that? And then you say, what's this car doing driving around my brain? Like uh, with these giant signs that I'm supposed to read that say, what about tomorrow? And you say, well, what do you mean? And they say, okay, well, boy, I'm trying to go to sleep, actually. And they say, good point. Let me, uh, if you're new, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, this is Sleep With Me podcast to put you to sleep. It's structurally what to expect uh, if you're new is a show starts off with a few minutes of business. That's how we keep it free. Uh, then there's about an intro. There's an intro that's about 12 minutes long. And the intro is actually a big part of the show. It feels like uh, something that never gets started or like a build up. Uh, where it's just kind of, yeah, it's like that part where everybody's, you say, well, what's on the other side of the door when they spill out the other side of the door? And you say, another doorway. Of course, the brilliance of whoever came up with the key, you say, another doorway for them to get stuck in. Just when they all get in the other room, then they rush through another doorway. In some reason, in my brain, on the other side of every door is a vending machine. I don't know, that does seem like an inane detail. Uh, normally, like, that's just something a splainer would use, inane, but uh, I guess part of my brain said, I just see a, a vending machine there. I said, well, it's interesting. I won't call it inane, though it's interesting. Okay, well, let's back it up. So you have a bunch of Keystone Cops or some other court cartoon-like characters. They're all trying to get, so this is a workplace, uh, like break rooms. No hallways. Maybe it's a hallway to a break room that they never reach. Oh, just like these intros that you're trying to explain to your listener, kind of, yeah. Where it's a metaphor, it's a metaphor, which you say could say that is a metaphor. The key, like, but you say, well, I don't understand what the metaphor is, and I'd say exactly, it's a visual metaphor. Uh, also, there's a vending machine there. I'm not sure if it's a met- the vending machine doesn't seem to serve any metaphorical purpose. It's just there for snacks uh, or you know other things like that. So convenience. Oh, yeah. Especially if you're caught in the, think about it, maybe good marketing. If all of those, uh, let's say there's 14 Keystone Cops just uh, off the hot top of my head. Probably wouldn't be 13, obviously. Uh, they, they, if they're all caught in the door doorway, only four or five of them are going to be stuck there. So a few of them are going to be in the back uh, waiting. And they'd say, you know what I could go for? Some nougat right now. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I need something with a caramel center myself. Uh, well, I'm looking for something more in the Nature Valley range. And they say, look, who would have thought to put a vending machine there? And they say, some part of Scooch's brain that's inane. Oh, but if you're new, so the intro is where I try to explain what the podcast is and go off topic. Just unintentionally, I just did it. It's also part of people's wind-down routine. The majority of the listeners that I hear from... They start the intro and they get ready for bed or they're already in bed and they're getting comfortable and you slowly wind down. Uh, some people use it, uh, you know, while they're brushing their teeth, brushing their hair, you know, brush, maybe you're doing that. Maybe you're brushing your, your sweaters. I, I think that's called something else. Uh, brushing your pets, uh, you know, get a little fermentation going on. Right. Am I right? Pets. Oh yeah, I'm right. Uh, but so it's, it's part of a lot of people's wind down routine, but about two or 3% of listeners, I think, uh, that statistic changes whenever I like, uh, remember it, uh, it, uh, they skip ahead to about the 18, 20 minute mark. That's when the stories generally start. 
And more and more people I hear from listen to listen during to the podcast during the day, and probably mostly to the intro, uh, just as part of a, a wind down routine at work or in the car. And obviously, it's not used to it's not for everybody. Yeah. So that's the intro. It doesn't ever make a lot of sense, uh, but I try to get there. I say, and I, and I really can't help myself. I, this is just how my. Uh, my whatever my internal makeup, how how my synapses work. I got a synapse full of Keystone cops, probably like running into another synapse, and they say, actually, Scooch, you just like I just heard from an imaginary neuroscientist who said you just explained the whole syn- great great uh, synapse theory with your Keystone cops metaphor. Once you had the vending machine in there. Because uh, the vending machine rep- okay, actually, I don't. Sorry, neuroscientist, I don't have time t- to complete your uh, thing because I have no neuroscience understanding. Uh, so we'll have to leave that event unclosed. Uh, but yeah, my brain is a bit like my brain does have synapses, as far as I know, and I try to use them. I try to, you know, and I don't know, is that where our gang, is there ganglion, gangly, gangly stuff in there? Cause it, I have gangly and jangly stuff up in there. Uh, but you, okay. Oh, so I was trying to explain to the new listener though. So the intro, you could skip it, but kind of see how it goes. This, like a podcast is kind of meant to be consumed a little bit passively. Like, just like watching Keystone Cops hit a vending machine, waiting for the other Keystone Cops to you know, unjam themselves from the doorway so they can spill out of that doorway hardy har har right into another one. But sometimes it, that metaphor for me is what bedtime feels like. Uh, I got thoughts uh, smelling into thoughts. I got other thoughts milling around. Right, see, who, who's the supervisor? Oh, uh, uh, L- L- Lucene, she's at the uh, vending machine. Okay, well, sh- sh- can't Lucene come over here and help... Uh, you know, migrate these thoughts to bed or something. Cause I gotta go, I can't, I, I, I don't really need to think about spreadsheets or the slide decks or whatever. Well, no, we're just running around. We, we don't have any specific things. We are just yelling, uh, sleep, sleep, slide decks. And well, exactly. You're running from doorway to doorway, getting stuck, uh, and yelling about spreadsheets. I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I got my room 64 degrees here. I got three layers of blankets. I got three layers of noise, like a uh, background noise. I got a cross breeze. And, you know, I, I haven't used a device in 45 minutes. I'm reading, uh, like, uh, like some, uh, <laughs> right now I'm reading, uh, d- dra- rereading a Dragonlance novel. And I'm about to go sleep. Like, what, what, like, uh, could, could you, could you, could you, could you quit, quit running around? Well, no, no, that's what we, what we do. Okay, well, believe it or not, also, I, I'm not actually in bed. I was actually trying to explain the structure of the podcast. Uh, so I probably should get, but why don't, you, why don't you all listen in while I explain what the podcast is uh, structurally? Because uh, next up, after the intro, there's some business between the intro and the show. Then uh, there's this, uh, usually a bedtime story or a recap. Uh, tonight will be a do- recap of uh, Doctor Who, uh, an episode, a two-parter episode. It'll be the second half. Uh, about it's about spelunking, I think. Uh, so it'll be good. It'll be good. Good uh, sleep material. I just kind of barely refer to the plot. I'll say, hmm, I wonder what. Uh, what what is that word? Where's the origins of that word? Just spelunk. Uh, you know, does anyone, has there ever been a funk album named the Sp- Sp- Funk? Uh, sounds more like, if it, somebody's looking, here's this, here's another branding opportunity. Courtesy of Scoots and your check for millions of dollars. Uh, if you're going to open a cannabis business, uh, Sp- Funk, uh, you, you, could, you, you definitely need to pay me for that. But uh, you, you could, that's probably good. Like I'm working on these, instead of book titles lately, I've been coming up with a lot of doozies. Also, I'll think, don't worry, at some point I'll think of a business named Doozies. Uh, I don't know what it is yet, uh, uh, but, uh, like, because uh, they just say, what businesses are based on spinning? Because uh, they say, oh, that one's a doozy. Ro- I mean, is there any roller coasters named Doozy? 
any sentient roller coasters listening to this podcast named Doozy. Okay, well, get a hold of me, you know, uh, when you're not busy. I guess if you're a sentient roller coaster, I don't know, does that mean you're not a... Uh, that's actually, maybe I should come to your universe and help you out, because it sounds like it wouldn't be great going in circles all the time. Uh, but, but Doozy the sentient roller coaster, maybe that could be something I could work on. Okay, so where were we? Oh, structural show. So there's the story, then some thank yous at the end. That's what to expect structurally. As far as other things, if you're new and you're you're still around, uh, you don't need to listen to me. Uh, you probably figure that out on, on your own. Uh, I'm here to distract you from all that doorway clogging and spilling and thoughts and saying slide decks. Uh, you know, do, 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 like, uh, I'm here to take your mind off it, to keep you company as you drift off. So you don't need to listen to me. And there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here for about an hour. There's, you can line up episode after episode. I'm here to keep you company throughout the night. Uh, I work on the show all the way to the end. So if you can't sleep, I'll be here uh, to kind of keep you company, to, to barely entertain you. The uh, reason I make a show is because I've been there in the deep, dark night tossing and turning. I just want to help. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of anything else you need to know. No, I hope I can help. I really appreciate you checking this show out. Most reviewers say it took two or, two or three times. Sometimes I just read a review in the, that'll be at the thank you to the end of the show. The person he, they listened once two or three years ago uh, said no thank you, then rediscovered the show, and now it's their favorite podcast. So. You know, see 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 if it works for you. Give it a couple tries or give it a try. Come back later. I'll be here to help you. That's what I want to do. And uh, that's it. Uh, uh, I strive and I yearn to help you fall asleep. And here's a couple of ways we keep the show going. All right, everybody. It is time to talk about our longest sponsor, Brooklinen. And it's almost that time again. So let the gift shopping begin. Brooklinen is the place to get presents that are somehow perfect for all the people right on time and stress free. Now, oh boy, does that make a happy holiday. And don't forget to treat yourself, you know, with something cozy too. Rich and Vicky started Brooklinen with one goal in mind bring hotel level comfort home with sheets that are high quality premium coziness so we can all get that five star feeling every day and brooklyn is known for sheets that literally win awards and the hits for home keep on coming their luxe sateen sheets continue to be a favorite for their buttery smooth finish and the perfect temperature for those that sleep a little chilly and don't forget about their weighted blankets oh boy do i love my weighted blanket it's like a hug whenever you need it. It's a perfect size to bring comfort to any corner of your space and just the right weight to put your mind and body at ease. And don't miss out, this Black Friday, Cyber Monday is the perfect time to commit to the comfort you're craving or gifting because every bit of it is on sale. Even though comfort is a reward in itself, the holidays can be hectic, so why not embrace the ease wherever you can find it? Brooklyn and has bundles for bed and bath that put all the essentials in one place and save you money. I know I'm going to be shopping at Brooklyn and for the people in my life, keeping them cozy, keeping them comfortable. So make the holidays even happier with help from the internet's favorite Brooklyn and Brooklyn and Black Friday Cyber Monday sale is only for a limited time and the deals don't get better. Now, if you happen to have missed out, you can always use our promo code sleep 20. Just visit Brooklyn and and get $20 off plus free shipping on orders of $100 or more with that code sleep 20. And you can do all all of that at brooklinen.com. B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. Uh, all you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. And I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is to create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, you know, stuff on your mind that you're thinking about, uh, anything physical you're feeling, uh, anything emotionally coming up, whatever it is that's uh, keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off. It could be something else, you know, travel, 
work, second or third shift, uh, seasonal stuff, uh, situational stuff, which maybe we'll talk about in the intro. Whatever's keeping you, uh, yeah, I'd like to take your mind off. I think I said that. Uh, what I'm going to do, in, in addition to using r- repeating phrases, is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I'm going to go off topic. Uh, but first, if you're new, uh, let me give you an idea of what to expect. And uh, w- welcome. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to this, uh, my attempt to, to create a safe place. And I'll give you a couple of things up front if you're new. Like this, give the podcast a few tries because for a lot of people, the first listens, it's not a doozy. It's supposed to be snoozy, right? But it could be a doozy because you say, is this person, why is this person trying to put me to sleep? So I'll try to answer that. Are they ever going to get to the point? I'll answer that right now. Probably barely. Uh, this doesn't, it doesn't really make any sense. He's just, and I say, yeah, I'm, I'm here to keep you company. And here, let me answer a couple of those, or let me, let me elaborate. Uh, though usually when I elaborate, I go off topic. Uh, so the structurally what to expect. The show starts off with a few minutes of business. That's how we're able to keep the show free for everybody. Instead of it being a paid service, it's just a free service. Or like an optional service, like some people pay and some people support the sponsors and everybody benefits. Pretty cool. So there's a business, then there's an intro. Now the intros are different than the normal introduction to anything. I mean, except for introduction to a book, you know, introduction to a book, you could expect it to be somewhere between one in 80 to 80 pages, probably in the teens though. You say, well, what's a good intro length? I'd say... 19 to 22 pages, in my opinion. And you say, was that the forward? And I say, well, that's, I don't know. I don't know. It could be. Yeah, because you sometimes you have a forward and an intro, and you'd say, this podcast, we only have an intro, so that's good news. Uh, but the intro is, is uh, it's about 12 minutes of me rambling and not really getting to the point trying to explain what the podcast is, but, but it, ha- it does serve a purpose. Uh, so let me tell you. And it's kind of an optional purpose. So it is meant to, like, uh, be familiar. So you say, oh, there's Scoots rambling. And to ease you into bedtime because you might be getting ready for bed. Some listeners are in bed. You know, you've had a day of being a human out there in the world. And we all know what that could be like. So so the podcast is here, or the intro is kind of here to, like, uh, you know, be a slow wind down. Now, a few percentage of people do skip the intro, go straight to the the story around 18, 20 minutes. So you could do that. And then some people fall asleep during the intro, which is perfectly okay as well. And then a good amount of people listen to the intros during the day for also a break during the day. So there's a lot of ways to use it, but it's just meant to kind of like, uh, let you sink into bed, let you get comfortable get, start drifting off. Um, or, you know, get, as you're getting ready for bed, you have something to listen to. Uh, but you, you know, it's hard to listen to stuff while you're brushing your teeth. I know that myself. And the good thing is you don't really need to listen to this podcast, it, whether you're brushing your teeth or you're already in bed, you can kind of listen. You can barely pay attention. As my Nana says, don't pay him any mind. Uh, you know, you don't have to pay me. You know, you could just, you could, there are listeners who don't understand anything I'm saying, or they turn me down to a murmur. And so those are options. Those are ways. So you don't need to listen. No pressure. Uh, but it, and there's no pressure to fall asleep either. I'm going to be here about an hour uh, to give you plenty of time to drift off. Uh, so there's plenty. You, you drift off. I'll be here to keep you company. And then you fall asleep whenever you want. I'll keep talking. Uh, you can, you know, you can set a sleep timer. Some people set it for 30 minutes. Some people set it for 45. Some people set it for an hour. There are listeners that listen to like eight or ten episodes in a row. A lot of those people are like Patreon supporters, but, you know, they queue up a bunch of episodes in a row. Uh, so you could do that as well. So that's, uh, oh, so, oh, and also no pressure to fall asleep, no pressure to listen. But if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here to keep you company. So I don't want you to worry about that either, that I'm going to, like, at, at any point, I'm going to be here present. Well, technically tonight will be my neighbor, Ray Perkins. 
and he'll be here with me, or he'll be here talking, and he sounds a bit like me because we're friends, and he'll be talking about a recent vacation we took. Uh, and actually, like, what's interesting and, in, in, like, that you could say, well, maybe making this podcast, I've learned some things as I've gone on and I've, I've gotten to interact with people like you and heard your feedback. And Ray might talk about this, but, but I think this is kind of the purpose of podcast service is, like, to, to, to distract you and take your mind off of stuff. Because Ray and I, we took a trip and we got into an airport very, very early, like, not even early in the morning. Uh, but it was like 4.30 in the morning at where we arrived, which was actually 1.30 where I live. And I hadn't really, you know, you know, you know how it is. I don't want to get into the details, but on the plane, it's not easy for me to get, to, to get some Z's. And it was so early that it, like we were said, oh, okay, we probably won't get into our, we won't be able to get into a hotel room unless we paid for one proactively, right? So I said to Ray, like, the airport wasn't busy. I said, what do you think about us, like, just sleeping here at the airport for a little while? You know, we could find a quiet corner. We had sleep masks. I had earplugs. And we said, what a great idea. And then I lied down. Well, I couldn't lay down because the the armrest, you know, because they don't want you laying down. Uh, But I leaned on the armrest, and I was, you know, like, like sometimes I can get a— it can be intense when you can't sleep and you want to sleep, Right. But the voice in me that makes a podcast said, hey, what if you just sit here and then there's no pressure to fall asleep? You just uh, rest and maybe you rest uh, and you sit at the airport and you listen to the airport like four in the morning, four thirty, five in the morning airport port noises. And maybe you fall asleep, but maybe you don't. Uh, and I, I said, and, and this voice is this more reasonable part of me that I've developed through the podcast said, you know, well, I'll, I'll like it'll be fine. Like. Won't be just as it won't be as good as sleeping, but if you just rest in a relaxed way, uh, it'll probably be good for you instead of like us having to get to sleep. And and, and and somehow I was able to give myself permission not to fall asleep and just to sit there at the airport with my eyes closed and my head in my my chin in my hands. And Eventually, I did drift in and out of sleep, but I really felt like I got some rest and I re- was relaxed and I didn't have any rigmarole about uh, why the, the, the you know the hockey sticks can't I fall asleep here. And we rested there till about six in the morning and then we had breakfast and stuff. And I'm sure Ray will talk about it, but uh, I actually really did feel refreshed. And I think I did probably like 30 minutes of that, get some Z's. And I'm not, I guess I'm only pointing it out because it d- doesn't usually happen like that for me. And I think it was like raised presence and also this podcast version of me presence to say, hey, like, what if you just sit here and rest? And that's kind of the job of the podcast. I see, what if you just lay there and I sit here and I tell you a story and I keep you company and you, you just listen. And, and, and ideally you listen as long as you need to, whether it's a whole episode or only five minutes, I'm going to be here to keep you company I'm going to be here to take your mind off stuff. I got a well, Ray, you know, we'll, you'll hear about, uh, it'll be the most meandering. There's a long setup, you know, Ray will explain some stuff about theme parks and we'll talk about uh, some pools we went to. Uh, so it'll be kind of interesting. But if you fall asleep, you say, well, I didn't really miss out on much. I'm sure I could re-listen during the day or check out the listener Facebook group or whatever and hear what happened. But if you, you know, the, 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 I don't know, that's kind of how it works. I say, hey, I'm going to be here. And you just relax, and I'll just here, be here to keep you company. And the reason I make the show is because I've been there, whether it was on the strip or in a regular time, tossing and turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. I've, I've had it all. And I just hope I can help. Now, the, the catch is it doesn't work for everybody. You know, this podcast is not universal. And it is a bit different and goofy and weird. I hope it works for you. And I hope I can help you fall asleep. So give it a few tries and see if it works for you. See if it takes your mind off stuff. But again, my voice and my storytelling method, uh, it's different. But I hope it's the kind of thing they say, oh, wow, this really did help. Or, oh, well, the second time I realized I didn't really have to pay attention. Or that you always don't make any sense and mispronounce words and stuff. And then... 
So that's it. I'm, I'm really here to keep you company and uh, be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar bud, your boar sib, your boar cuz, maybe one day your boar bestie, and help you fall asleep. I, work, I really appreciate you checking the show out, first of all, and giving me your time. And I work very hard. I, I really take it seriously that, that you gave me your time. Because I, I yearn and I strive to help you fall asleep. Uh, and before we get to Ray's story here, here's a couple of other ways we keep the show going. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing? Trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, uh, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is to create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations, so things you're thinking about, uh, things you're feeling physically or emotions you're experiencing. It could be travel could be weather, whatever's keeping you awake. I'd like to take your mind off of that. What I'm going to do is I got this nice, safe place to set up, plenty of room. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use a lulling, a soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Uh, that's this, I don't know how to spell it, actually. C-R-E-K-Y, dulcet, D-U-L-C-E-T. So kind of like rusted sweet sounds uh you say how's that oh well that's what you sound like actually i don't know maybe i could say i don't think it would make i think it would make a little bit less sense if i said dulcet froggy tones uh trying to think of an f word that has like nice alliteration with frog like uh florid is florid a good thing i think it is florid frogs (laughs) phonetics uh anyway uh, what I'm going to do is send my voice across the deep air. Lowing, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, uh, all that stuff to keep you company and to take your mind off of stuff, uh, just like I said. And uh, while you fall asleep, I'm really here to keep you company as you drift off. And uh, so that's kind of, um, I, I think that's a, <laughs> that's the short version of it. Now I'll give you the long version. Now, if you're new, I'm glad you're here. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. I've been doing the show for a little while. But, you know, when new people check out the show, just like you, I want you to feel welcome. But I want, I want you to understand if you're skeptical or you're doubtful, totally, I, I totally get that. And let me explain a couple of things. Because, one, if you're skeptical or doubtful, you might even be like, uh, might even become more because uh, this podcast is a little bit different. It doesn't make it, like, if you're looking for something straightforward or that makes a lot of sense, uh, this one is more like you look at it like a cloud in the sky or a wave uh, yeah, on the water. You say, okay, well, that wave's not breaking, but it's uh, it's undulating. And then you might watch the next wave. And at some point you say, okay, this is like, a, it's not super wavy. It's just the water's undulating. So can't really talk like a that's kind of the podcast you see he's talking but it's not like dramatic with like big curves and whooshes and you know breakwater whatever that stuff is you know the the hollywood style waves you see in all those movies and you know there's not surfers or what are those things called where you go like the thing where you go through the uh like a uh, cube, gl- gleaming the cube. That's a skateboarding reference. Uh, tubing. I think it's going through the tube or something. I don't know. I'm not very good with it. My vocabulary is more geared towards putting people to sleep than making a, a deep. <laughs> my wave vocabulary. We've reached. We're past the end of it. I think as soon as they said und- it's been down. As soon as they said undulate, it's been you know. So try to pay like a loose attention. I guess that was my main thing. And a couple other things. You don't really need to listen to me, so you could kind of barely pay attention. I guess that kind of goes along with it. But here's the paradoxical thing. And also no pressure to fall asleep. Uh, the episode's going to be about an hour. The episode's going to be about an hour. I'm here to keep you company as you drift off. And then if you can't sleep, I'm here to the very end. 
So it's kind of like uh, you, you fall asleep at your leisure. Now, uh, the structure of the show, here's what to expect. The show starts off with business. That's how we keep it free for everybody. Uh, then there's an intro. The intro is about 12 to 15 minutes. And the purpose of the intro is it, it's kind of a varied, it, I guess it doesn't have a purpose, uh, which uh, people have pointed out before. Uh, it, it does have a, what's, what's the difference between having a purpose and having like something you kind of say, well, it kind of does some stuff. Uh, but so it, it it really is part of like a lot of people's bedtime routine, uh, like their formula for sleep, as we're kind of talking about tonight, where you say, okay, I'm going to wind down. I'm going to start the Sleep With Me podcast as I get ready for bed and I have my tea and I brush my tea. So where other people will get in bed and then they'll start the show and they'll pet their pets or other people will just start sinking in and getting comfortable and drifting off. Some listeners just skip ahead to the story, and some listeners fall asleep within the few, first few minutes. So it's kind of like, and then other people listen as part of a lot, lot longer wind down routine, like people listening in the tub or people like trying to unwind during the day. So initially, what works like is you test out the podcast. If I, you know, if you'll have me, is uh, and, and most people does do say it takes two or three tries to get used to the show. But it's just a, you know, use it as part of your wind down. You know, give yourself a time to ease into sleep. Uh, I guess that's just part of, like, my feelings around sleep. Yeah, it's like, okay, I like to try this, this, and this together. It's part of my routine to get a good night's sleep. So kind of find out what works for you. So, oh, structure show. So that's what the intro is. Uh, then there's going to be a little business. Then there's the story. And tonight we'll be uh, cruising around Australia, I, I think, on a, like a magical comforter or quilt, uh, if I could find a way to personify it later, but uh, in, in, in visiting uh, some, some nice locations in Australia and, uh, you know, talking to them and, and, and finding out, uh, you know, just, just a sleepy journey, I guess. It'll be fun. Hopefully I'll learn some new words, some new slang. And that's kind of structure show. And then when you think about the podcast, uh, I mean, it's, I make it for you if it can help you. Like, it doesn't help everybody. But I do believe you do deserve a good night's sleep, and I'd like to be a part of uh, helping you with that if I can. And a lot of times people say, well, Scooch, what goes into the show, right? Like, what makes it for a good Sleep With Me podcast episode? Or how did, like, how did you work it tonight uh, to make it sleepy? And I guess there's like, I'd like to think there's a lot of fancy stuff that goes in there, like pointless meanders. Oh boy, are they fancy. Superfluous tangents, uh, whatever those like phonetically frog like, uh, f- f- frog like phonemes. Uh, is that even a word? Uh, creaky dulcet tones. Uh, but really, I think in the end, it's like about me being kind of present here with you at a distance you're comfortable with. Uh, uh, like that, you know, I'm here uh, eventually if you become a regular listener for the regular listeners, you can kind of, uh, feel my presence or sense it in, in that you, there's some trust or some security or relief there. And that like, it's almost like a, like, regardless of whether you're listening or not, I think that's like kind of what helps uh, fall asleep is like, uh, I'm here whether you need me or not, uh. And I said, what's a good analogy for that? And I said, well, what about like a bedside glass of water, right? Like, because you got it there and it kind of slakes your thirst, uh, even if you don't need it, at least for me. Like, I usually have a can of sparkling water that's lost its sparkles over a few days. The sparkling water that learned, that forgot to sparkle. But having it there, and I mean, this depends on your water to air tolerance, you know, but like you say, okay, it's there if I need it. Uh, where for me, if it's not there, where I reach for the can and it's empty, I say, oh boy, it becomes a whole rigmarole, right? Analogy was like, how does that, how does that help the show or describe what it is? Uh, I mean, in some sense, the intention or on your end is the, the trust or whatever that's like, hey, I'm here to help is kind of the foundation of the podcast or the soil. Uh, so, that, uh, I don't know, that's what the intention of the show is, I think. But then it's like, okay, 
is that the wa- here's something deep is like is that the water or the glass uh like which parts of like the bedtime story right it, 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 or um oh so i got made, made myself uh, even more mixed up uh, like i would say the intention it is not the glass in this analogy, but if you were to stretch it a little bit, or the cup, yeah, we'll say cup, scooch, no glasses at bedtime. I'd say, okay, you got you. I don't know, am I, like, I guess in my, I'm kind of both. I'm delivering, because you say, what, what is a good word for that? It's the vessel or the, I guess the cup. Uh, uh, yeah, am I the water or the vessel? I guess I'm the, the, the ship at sea, yeah. I don't know, but it, it is something like if I come up with a softer one, I, it, this is like a, like an al- analogy that you like, uh, like run into a pointless meander, but for, for the sake of efficiency, let's say I'm both, uh, like, uh, and I guess the glass, maybe the cup is the structure of the show and the meander, it, but it's just no, like part of the podcast, I guess, is knowing I'm there if you need me. Uh, to to take your mind off stuff or keep you company, like so that's why it's optional to listen. But you can listen. You can take a sip whenever you need it. Uh, and the cool thing about the podcast is it's like so, like you could create a playlist or keep it running all night. So you say, okay, it's there. I just have to p- press play again, or I use a sleep timer. Also, I don't know if water has an intention. So because because like I'm saying, hey, I'm here to help. I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff. So. I don't know. I mean, because I've been there. I guess water can't. I mean, yeah, I guess water says, hey, I mean, you know, I'm, what are you, 88% water? I'm 100% water, except for the cup, which is probably some percentage of water. I don't know. Maybe there's something with the flowing. Uh, the water, I mean, I guess the, the cool thing is, like, if if water does become sentient, you'd like, wouldn't water pretty have a pretty big ego then, or some waters? Because they say, holy cow, I'm everywhere, man. You seen, did you know, you know who Brad Pitt is, right? You know who Brad Pitt is, like 80 or whatever the actual factual percentage is. So I'm kind of Brad Pitt and people love me. I don't know. People like, have you heard about, but people love to, like, I slake thirst and people frolic in me sometimes. Uh, uh, Like people look forward to seeing me, you know, 90, you know, a lot of percentage of the time they say, oof. Just got to cool you down a little bit. Uh, they like altering my temperature. I don't know. I guess I, once you said you're like 88% of Brad Pitt is you, I'm like, uh, no wonder your ego's huge. Uh, the Hemsworths are probably, oh, you're oh, all of, wow, every Hemsworth. Is it Hemsworth or Helmsworth? Because they always get that mixed up. Oh, you make up all of the Hemsworths and the Helmsworths. Okay, well, that's good to know. That was water, everybody. Uh, recently sentient water. So I guess that's it. I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here to keep your company. I'm glad you're here. Like I said, a lot of reviewers, like 99%, say, hey, give it a few tries. See how it goes. The reason I make the show is because I know how it feels. I said that already, but, uh, and I want to be there when you reach out or if you're just leaving, you just have that idea in my sense, uh, Hey, that water's there when I need it. Uh, Scooch is here talking. If I need to listen to him, I can. Uh, he'll keep me company. If I don't, I could either put a sleep timer on or just kind of uh, tune out. And he's just kind of rambling, keeping me company. He's my boar friend. My boar bay, my boar bud, my boar sib, my boar bestie. So uh, I'm glad you came by. I'd like to help you fall asleep. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive uh, to do so. And uh, here's how we've been able to bring you tonight's show. Uh, Hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations, changes in time and temperature, uh, routine, you know, whatever it is. If you have something you're thinking about, 
something you're experiencing or physically dealing with, uh, like to take your mind off of that and keep you company. Be near your bedside, at your bedside, across the room. It could be like it would like your. We could be. This is imaginary, but we could be best friends. I could be on one of those tin cans, uh, you know, going across. Uh, it maybe actually maybe that's something people don't know about anymore. And that it, uh, it was mostly in the movies, uh, from my memory. So maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders superfluous tangents, uh, other, you know, things, TBD to things to be decided. Like when I think of them, I say, well, you got to put some words in there, scoots, uh, WTBS words to be spoken. So, uh, but basically I'm here to goof around and keep you company. If you're new, here's a couple of things. This show's silly. Uh, and a little bit goofy and very different. So give it a few tries, kind of see how it goes. If you can, just kind of uh, view, view the first couple of listens as a passive observer. Ideally, you'll fall asleep. Uh, maybe uh, I'll put you in a better mood. Uh, but yeah, just kind of see how it goes. Structurally, what to expect. The show starts off with a few minutes of business. That's how we keep it free. Then there's an intro. The intros are around 12 or 15 minutes. And it mostly consists of like helping you ease you into bedtime by me t- spending a 12 to 15 minutes trying to come up with a metaphor of what the podcast is. And I haven't been able to successfully do that in a concise way in 750 uh, plus episodes. Uh, but yeah, like you, you could listen to it and, and, and ideally it helps uh, get you comfortable. You know, some people fall asleep during it. A few people skip ahead about 18 minutes or so and just go straight for uh, the discussion portion of the show. Tonight we'll be talking about Doctor Who, uh, season two, episode uh, a, like uh, 10 or 10, 11, depending on technic- technicalities. Uh, but if you say, well, I don't watch that show, or oh, I don't want to be spoiled, or. Doesn't that show contain, uh, is, isn't Doctor Who like a traveler? Is it the same Doctor Who with a scarf? No scarf on this one. Good question. That's a very good question. Uh, but no, it's kind of like, a, I'll look at the episode. This one actually has a low, this is a very fun episode. It does have a low Doctor Who and Rose content, uh, but it was still, it, it has a full arc, uh, and the first third of the story is, uh, it's really a heartfelt story from beginning to end, but you you wouldn't know it listening to me talk about it because I'll mostly be talking about uh, Jeff Lynn, ELO, things in the background. I say, what is that in the background of that dude's room? Elton is his name. Here's something I do, I don't think I'll talk about, but I do wonder where, like who where who who like does Elton have roommates? Because uh, Elton's in Elton's room the whole time. Not the whole episode, but just the ten. Anyway, so that could be, that'll be what, what you have coming up. You just got a, like, four-minute sampler of it there. And then there's some thank yous at the end. Between the intro and the uh, episode portion, there is some business. That's what, again, keeps the show free and able to, you know, put it out twice a week. Yeah, for your consumption, to put you to sleep, to keep you company, to calm you down during the day. That's, a, like, a larger portion of the show is... Uh, you say, hey, I need something distract, something ch- to like, uh, I can't quite chillax, but I would like it if my L-A-Z-A-R-D brain chillaxed. Uh, so maybe if I put this podcast on and I say, yeah, you, I got you got it. And the whole idea is to keep you company. Like not, this podcast isn't something you really need to listen to. And it isn't necessarily something that actually does put you to sleep and more. It keeps you company as you drift off. It distracts you. Is I'm I've been a bit distracted thinking about the so this tin can thing. So let me see if I could break it out for everybody. Now some of you may have lived in the tin can phone era. This was a hobbyist phone, by the way. It wasn't a, a actual communication device, uh, like a mass market thing. Uh, but what it was was uh, let's see. So uh, so some of you may have lived during that era. 
I guess for some reason, uh, well, anyway, it was on cartoons a lot when I was a kid. And maybe like one science class, you would do it. But really, the glory users of the tin can phones were either best friends that happen to live in houses next to one another. I guess kind of CBs and walkie talkies uh, is in that great Netflix show kind of did away with that. Even though, come on, I mean, those were the greatest, those kids had the greatest walkie talkies ever existed. I mean, I suspended my disbelief for it till just this moment, but. Before you had walkie-talkies in movies and cartoons, you had a tin can phone. It may have had gone by another thing. So if you had either a treehouse or a best friend with whose bedroom was also ideally parallel to yours in about 15 feet or less away by window, and you could do this. You know, I bet you one of the great science channels, podcasts, YouTube, you know, check out SciShow. Maybe they've done it. I don't know. Uh, but like, uh, because I don't know, I don't know what the science behind it is, is sound waves, I would presume. But basically you take two tin cans, which are also known, were known as soup cans. Now I would more call them a bean can because I mean, I guess you still buy soup. I don't, I guess I don't buy a lot of canned soup, but I do buy my bean, I do buy beans and tomato, like uh, if you fire, you know, d- diced tomatoes in cans. But a can that you would buy canned goods in. So you need two of those. Then I think you need a string. Uh, And then you need a a supervising adult, by the way. Always, uh, like, uh, of course. Then you would need something. I think these used to be in tool. This used to be a tool that was used all the time. I don't know if it is necessarily anymore. Uh, An all, A-W-L. Or I guess a hammer and a nail, because I can kind of see this, and and I'm seeing it in my science book now. And then what you do is you you obviously wash out the can, so you have an open end on one end of the can and a closed end on the other. Here's another pro tip, and like you want to probably sand down the inside of the open can because it could, you know, just to make sure there's no edges. If we're, you know, if we've got a responsible adult here, we might as well put them to work. You know, get sanding. Uh, Aunt Sally. So sand that down. Then you take, let's just say, a hammer and a nail. You want a pretty big nail, like the kind they use in cartoons and movies on these in science books. I don't know if that's a double odd or what, but uh, then you just tap the nail with the hammer, put a little hole in there. Not, too, I guess, not too big a hole, uh, but you know, a hole. Then you put the string through. Then reach through the other side. You knot the string a few times. And then you do the same. Now, you don't want, like, here's probably why I never did it, because the string would have gotten all freaking tangled. I don't, I don't know if Rob or uh, Josh or, uh, can get this to Jeff Probst, but maybe this could be a competition on Survivor. Also, maybe, yeah, maybe Survivor tin can communication. Like, they could call, like, the other tribe and say, hey, what are you doing over there? I got to get to the point of what this thing actually does, though. So you have the string now. You have two t- tin cans. Now all you do is, and here's one of my favorite words to say, pull it taut. And that's a T-H-U-G-H-T, I think. Uh, and then what you can do, and you could whisper, like whisper, say, hey, uh, hey, sibling, sorry about that the other day. I love you so much. Uh, or if it was a best friend, you would say stuff to them. And then you have to, I think you have to put it to your ear to listen. So you should use uh, walkie-talkie protocol and say over. Uh, and then you can communicate just like a, a, a telephone or a walkie talkie. And you should have tons of fun with that. Uh, just don't get it tangled. Ideally, uh, you got to use it in some situation where I guess you'd have to speak quiet. You know, let me know those of you that are doing it. Uh, I'll think about doing it with my daughter. I'll put that on the, you know, the list of things, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe I could, uh, maybe I'm at emotionally at the point where I could do this, uh, a weekend science project and uh, maybe I could do it in front of her friends. So I said, dad, I wanted a real, f-. I said, well, you, you know, you told me you wanted a phone. Here you go. Tin can phone. We'll run it across. Yeah. You know, you, you can't really run it across anywhere where people are walking. That's why in the TV shows and the movies, it was always, uh, so anyway, that's a tin can phone. I think my point was I was going to try to make that into a metaphor 
that it, at least in my, this was all, you know, when they say scoots, what did you aspire to be as a kid? Well, treehouse owner, uh, communicate, you know, having a bit like a member of the Goonies, uh, could talk to some, have a best friend. Of course, if it was the eighties and it would develop, you know, one day into a blossoming romance, uh, that I talked to by tin can phone. And or also a parallel, you have awesome walkie talkies, uh, go you know, adventures, uh, mostly those things. Though, tin, what would you take? You know, if we said scale it down, it's well, t- treehouse, uh, and the tin can phone, you know, because I know the Goonies, uh, they are, but you know, then we have the Netflix show, but those kids are already full up too. So, yeah, I guess one of those two, those things, uh, that, that's what I'd like. And how, Scoots, how is that a metaphor for the podcast? Well, you know, when you're lying there in bed, it's always nice to have somebody to talk to. And ideally, you, 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 like, but that's like, uh, that's aspirationally. Really, it's just nice to have someone to take your mind off of stuff, to know you're not, uh, to, to, to not feel alone. And maybe to put that tin can phone to your ear and they say, well, anyway, I was telling, I was talking to my teddy bear about, uh, uh, buying shirts, uh, and I say, well, what size do you wear? How come no shirt? You know, and then I said, well, yeah. well why don't you uh, snuggle up here under my arm? You know, that's the kind of thing that might take your mind off stuff, keep you company. That's the kind of thing we do on this show. And mostly because I know how it feels. I've been there. So I guess that's kind of the summary of the show. Also, I guess a little uh, monologue about tin can phones. And probably, you know, ideally, the e- you know, emails will be coming in with corrections, which I appreciate. And I say, okay, well, that's good to know. I would have mi- would have wondered why, I wondered why my tin can phones never worked. Oh, that Jeff, thanks for getting back to me. I didn't realize why that's why you wouldn't base the whole season. Actually, Jeff, I didn't say the whole season of Survivor based on that. It just said it'd be a cool thing. Maybe it could be, maybe instead of further family visits, they talk by tin can phone. They say, well, you didn't earn a family visit, uh, but you could talk to them by tin can phone. No. Okay. Hello. Oh, that was an imaginary uh, version of Jeff Probes anyway. Also, this episode's going to come out. I don't even know if there'll be survival being anyway. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. And, uh, I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Uh, I work very hard. I yearn and I strive for it. Uh, and I uh, appreciate your time. And uh, here's a couple of ways we keep the show uh, going. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it's a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, physical sensations, you know, stu- so stuff you're thinking about or stuff you're experiencing or, or, you know, coming up for you, you know, but it could be travel. It could be situational, whatever's keeping you awake. I'd like to take your mind off that. I'd like to create a kind of safe place, as I said, where you could just, uh, you know, f- f- sink in a little bit more. And I guess be distracted. Uh, like what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use these lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, uh, pointless meanders. Uh, believe me, I've got uh, plenty of those. I've got a, uh, I've got an arsenal of, uh, you know, when it comes to, to, to sleepy equipment, I put the arson arsenal of, uh, sleepy stuff. Uh, I don't know if you see, even I don't know. I said, should I chuckle at that or no? Uh, but, uh, it, that's actually, well, anyway, uh, yeah, but so, oh, some of those things would be at yeah, tangents, uh, superfluous dialogue, uh, m- a lot of it at the beginning of the show, particularly right now, I'd be like, uh, unresolved metaphors. I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I don't want to say I invented that. Uh, I'm just the first, first person that, you know, isn't in an English major that's used uh, unresolved metaphors. Or this is the only place where it's like, it's not shade. You say, well, the book was full of unresolved metaphors. And you say, oof, that's, I mean, the, that was about as harsh as I said when you said Byron-esque. Uh, 
And uh, I didn't even know what that meant, but I know what unresolved, I think, is the unresolved metaphor, is it anything like a simile that doesn't get finished? I know technically that one kind of did, but uh, you don't know. Are we in the midst of a metaphorical dialogue right now? Oh, no, it's imaginary dialogue. Wait, so there's a part of my internal imaginary makeup uh, that was an English major? Oh, wow. It must have, like, did you, because uh, that's great. I'd love to sit to, I, I, of all my family members, I think my brother Ken would probably make the best English major just because he has the ability to retain and discuss discrete things about novels that I don't necessarily possess, but I guess an imaginary part of me does. Oh, no, you are you said you're an English major, not a, not a, oh, you're, you're not a good English major. Okay. What are we talking, like C plus? Not quite. Okay, well, am I, do I pay, is your tuition imaginary, and am I in charge of it? We've got one out of two of those. Okay, well, it's a, well, we'll see. Um, sorry, I got distracted there. By uh, that may be an unresolved metaphor. It's definitely be unresolved for me because I'm be like, who is this English major living in my uh, collective unconscious, living in or my collective imagine imagination, imagination? Co- oh, you started an imagination collective. Well, wh- I thought you were an English major. Oh, like. Uh, but you have other interests. Say, okay, that's cool. I mean, maybe you could write a, a novel. Okay, get back to the intro. Thanks. That was the most useful thing so far. Okay, so if you're new, uh, those are a couple of things that ways I'm going to kind of. T- I'm here to keep you company and to take your mind off of stuff. That's basically uh, the basics. It's structurally, what to expect with this show. That's when it can become different because this podcast is outside of the norms of all things, yeah, even proper usage of words. Uh, I mean, proper use. <laughs> say, not only does he have unresolved metaphors, he misuses his imagination. And I say, well, the nuns were telling me that. Believe me, they didn't even know what they, they didn't even know they had it right because I just giggled when they said, hey, "You, you, you misuse your man." And I say, "Oh boy." If you only knew, sister, uh, I say, but, but uh, so, uh, where was I? Um, so, okay. So if you're new, structurally what to expect, your show starts off with a few minutes of business. Then we have an intro where I try to make a metaphor about the show, but really what the intro is, is your, your chance to wind down or fall asleep or you can skip ahead. Usually around 18 minutes is the best place to skip ahead to. You'll be pretty close to the beginning of uh, the next portion of our show. But for the majority of regular listeners, uh, the intro kind of becomes part of their bedtime routine. Uh, and they use it as a wind down. Or as more and more listeners use it during the day, kind of just to they say, well... I wonder what Scoots is doing. He's probably having trouble resolving his metaphors. And, you know, that'll be a distraction from this real world stuff for about 20, 30 minutes. So it's kind of like an anti-coffee break. Uh, because they, like, or maybe not. I don't know. If, if only I knew how, knew what the correct usage of that was. But I think you know what I mean. Uh, but, but so if you're new, give the show a few tries, especially with the intro. Cause you say, well, you're not making any sense. And I'd say, Oh boy, do you got, you got to write. You say, by definition, you, you can't, uh, uh, you, you can't, well, I don't know if you can, can you, or can't you unresolve metaphors? And I'd say, well, have you ever seen me try to fix anything? Resolve that one. I think you. I think you'll see that there is a, like a, un, un, you'll find you're resolving in my unresolved issues. Uh, spin that metaphor just set me for a spin. It was like being. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I should have snuck a simile in there. You're right, cheap joke brain. Okay. Uh, I think I was in the middle of trying to make another point though, and uh, not needing to listen to me. Oh, give it a few tries. It doesn't make any sense. Um, oh, you know, yeah, give it a few tries because a lot of people find they say, What are you talking about, or whatever. But I'm just here to help and to take your mind off stuff. So, so sometimes it takes a getting used to. 
and I'll come back to that. Then after that, t- tonight we'll, we'll have a bedtime story. And if you think this intro was off, uh, this will be a tale of the tape episode where I, try, I, have, I pick a movie I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, that it was supposedly some part of my, like, uh, nostalgia, whatever that, what, where's that, where's your nostalgia held? Is that, well, I don't know what organs in charge of the nostalgia, but whatever it is, uh, I try to go and I say, oh, you said this movie's really important to us, eh? Well, let's re- try to remember the plot of it. And that always goes very, uh, interestingly. So I'll be trying to remember the plot of, uh, the Legend of Billy Jean, which may not even be the name of the movie, uh, and it'll be a very bedtime. You know, even if I if I remember anything exciting, don't worry, I'll steer my way around that, uh, like a scooter on beach sand. And then the show will end with some thank yous and some good nights. There's some business between the intro and the bedtime story portion of the show, but really the whole show is a bedtime story. It's just a little bit different. And also, if you're new, you don't need to listen to me. That's, you could turn me, you know, listen. That's, that's why I also you could give a few tries because you say, well, I prefer to listen to Scooter where I can't hear what he's saying. I mean, I get, those reviews are very different. Like there's some people that like to concentrate and there's some people that like to lower me to a mumble. There's some people that like to slow the show down. And there's some people that just kind of listen and fall asleep and, and then they listen all night long. Like, uh, there's something about, so, so find what works for you and there's no pressure to fall asleep. That, that's the other key part about this show. I'm here to keep you company as you drift off to take your mind off of stuff it, to be here at your side. I'm your ally in, in the deep dark night because I've been there. Uh, so there's no pressure to fall asleep. That's why I make the shows over an hour or just over an hour. So you see how we got plenty of time. You could queue up episode after episode if you need to. Uh, so there's no pressure to fall asleep. Here's the other thing that's kind of new. There's also no pressure to like this show. Uh, and I, I want to fully in, lean into that in some sense. Uh, I, that like There's no, uh, I, there's like a, there's only upside. I, I really want to help you. And if you give it some tries and you don't, it doesn't work for you. Or you're already listening and you say, Scoots, we're just not cut from the same jib or whatever. I say, well, I don't even know what a jib is, but I do know what a bib is. And I sh- if, if there was an adult bib requirement, uh, what would that be? A, 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 an a, ABR? I, they would have signed it for me. They'd say, yeah, California fa- passed its first ABR law, ABR 107. The adult bib requirement, just for a Drew, Drew Scooter, he's required to wear a bib from now on. And it's a great, that's a law I could get behind. And it's, you know, does it have the little catch thing that the modern bibs have, like the bib trough? And it's a, well, here, here's something, Ga- you know, I did see Gavin on a plane, on, on a regular plane, a Southwest flight. And not that, like during campaign season. And first of all, I spotted his hair. Literally, at a four, I said, "Look, I thought it was a sl- I, I thought it was a, it was a flight to L.A., and I said, "There's got to be like an A-list celebrity on this flight because I, I all I saw was like, like a, a four inch by four inch patch of the hair in the crowd, and uh, he was on the flight, and I said, "Oh man, that's uh, I got to respect that move," uh, but. uh if I'd say thanks for pa- oh I was gonna say Gav uh oh oh yes uh, uh governor uh, governor Newsom uh could do you think I could like put put like messages on the bib though okay well we'll work that out great uh, I don't know where I was talking about before I came up with that adult bib requirement oh some people might not like me that's what I was saying or the podcast might not work for you. And I have a new thing, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. You know, there, pretty simple. You'll find uh, other, some, some other sleep podcasts. You'll find some other audio that I've used in the past. And then if you do, you say, well, Scooch, you, you know, a strongly, it, the, the whole bib thing, uh, you can find options to kind of uh, channel that energy too. 
Uh, so I think that's it. I, I mean, I, I was I, ideally I thought I'd have some more things, but I'll, I'll be doing a lot of thinking about this. Uh, see, can I get a copy? Of, do I get a copy of that bill with the pen you signed it with? Since I'm the only person it applies to. Also, who who petitioned? Oh, my collective imagination petitioned, and they got it passed. Uh, wow, first bill passed. Uh, oh, it was a referendum. First referendum passed was a budget of zero. We, the people of the state of California, declare that uh, uh, the passage of ABR, the, the ABR, adult bib requirement, it could be altered though, right? It, you know, for other people. I didn't realize my, my, uh, well, I guess I did, I guess. So I guess that's it. Uh, if you're new, I really, honestly, I hope this podcast can help you. If you're a regular listener, I'm glad you're back. Uh, now you got something else to giggle about when you wake up tomorrow. You say, was Scooter talking about bibs again? I think he was. I think he was talking about, uh, he, he was talking about bibs he was going to design for English majors, lit majors, the bib, bib, book in a bib, he's going to call it. It's a new business he's launching with because he's required to wear a bib, some sort of marketing thing. And he also said it's great for exercise, uh, really uh, increases like one or two muscles uh, on your upper shoulder. It's called, yeah, book and a bib. And he thinks there'll be a big market for, um, you know, baby showers and stuff too. Yeah, book and a bib, a bib and a book. Yeah, that's the thing. So, you know, that's another idea. Also, that's my idea, by the way. So don't start taking it. You heard it here first, either, either, or either bib, bib in a book or book in a bib or bibbity book, because that's what I'd say. Bibbity, bibbity book, uh, or book, bookity, bookity bib. Lookity, lookity. I've got a bookity in my bib. Uh, so anyway, I'm glad you're here. I really hope I can help you fall asleep. I'm a bit silly because I want to make bedtime feel a little bit less serious. But I'm serious about putting you asleep. I work very hard. I strive in a year to help you fall asleep. And uh, thank you so much for coming by. Here's a couple of ways we keep the show going. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, I don't know about you, but I always wished life it came with a user manual, whether it's dealing with my thoughts or my feelings or, you know, what's getting in the way of me falling asleep or my relationships with other people. I don't have a user manual, but what I do have is a work I do with my therapist. And yeah, unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and accessible anywhere, 100% online. And I know from my work I do in therapy every single week is that BetterHelp is a great option. It's an option I recommend to people in my personal life because I get so much out of therapy. I get coping skills. It helps me be my best self and be my best self with other people in my life and also deal with other people with and they're not at their best. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists. Therapists available 100% online, plus it's affordable. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. There's no waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me that's better help h-e-l-p dot com slash sleep with me thanks everybody